trust in the Lord, and let me be glad and rejoice in your mercy, for you have seen my affliction. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who renewed the world through mysteries beyond all telling, grant we pray that your church may be guided by your eternal design and not be deprived of your help in this present age through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Lo, I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The things of the past shall not be remembered or come to mind. Instead, there shall always be rejoicing and happiness in what I create. For I create Jerusalem to be a joy and its people to be a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and exalt in my people. No longer shall the sound of weeping be heard there, or the sound of crying. No longer shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not round out his full lifetime. He dies a mere youth who reaches but a hundred years, and he who fails of a hundred shall be thought cursed. They shall live in the houses they built, and eat the fruit of the vineyards they plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is from Psalm 30. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you drew me clear and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name, for his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime his goodwill. At nightfall weeping enters in, but with the dawn rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You change my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, forever will I give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Seek good and not evil, so that you may live, and the Lord will be with you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus left Samaria to Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his native place. When he came into Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, since they had seen all he had done in Jerusalem at the feast. For they themselves had gone to the feast. 
When he returned to Cana in Galilee, where he had made the water wine, uh, he encountered a royal official whose son was ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and asked him to come down and heal his son who was near death. Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The royal official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, You may go, your son will live. The man believed what Jesus said to him and left. While the man was on his way back, the slaves met him and told him that his boy would live. He asked him, he, rather, he asked them when he began to recover. They told him, the fever left him yesterday about one in the afternoon. The father realized that just at that time Jesus had said to him, your son will live. And he and his whole household came to believe. Now this was the second sign Jesus did when he came to Galilee from Judea. Gospel of the Lord. Uh, during uh, the special seasons of the church's year, such as Lent, the readings all uh, go together rather than uh, in, during ordinary time. There are simply two readings that don't necessarily have a connection with each other. I'm speaking, of course, about the reading at the Masses. In Lent, there's always a connection. So we have Isaiah, the first reading, prophesying about a new heavens and a new, a new earth. And uh, then we have Jesus, who shows us in his ministry uh, the beginning of that new creation. So the new creation has to do with overcoming death, that the, the, the servant uh, boy was, was dying, or, or the um, royal official son, I should say, was dying, and um, sickness, uh, so Jesus healed uh, this, uh, this son, and uh, the new creation goes actually beyond uh, these important things.
And uh, yes, uh, he, he does work in this world. Some people think he's, he's too far away to be involved. He really isn't. Uh, his powers are real. He, gives, he, he makes people holy. Um, he heals people. Uh, he, he does many things. Uh, but we're not yet at the point of the perfection of the new heavens and the new earth. It's, it's, we're only on our way. The thing is, there have been many schemes that are connected with the idea that we could come up with a paradise in this, in this world. I mean, Karl Marx was one example of somebody who had this idea of a secular utopia. We cannot in any way, shape, or form have the world that we need to have without Jesus and his influence. We, we just can't, we can't do it. So our faith is extremely important, uh, both now and for, really for eternity. So we ask the Lord, Dear Lord, please strengthen our faith, help us persevere in our faith and grow in our faith and rely on you as our rock. And no matter what we deal with in this world, and to put our understanding of security in you and, and your plans for us, not so much in our own immediate plans, however important they might be, but you must be the rock of our confidence and our strength. This is what the virtue of hope is. It's uh, having confidence in God and living accordingly. Uh, we need not lose hope. Mother Teresa used to say, never let anything get in the way that will cause us to lose our, our hope. Uh, if we believe in Jesus, uh, we, we have everything that we need um, with regard to what, what is real security. Lord, help us. Grow, to be the people we're supposed to be, um, and to really make a difference in this world, um, to show other people there's more to life than just making our way through this veil of tears, as we say to the Blessed Mother, who is our life, our sweetness, and our hope. This time we turn to our dear Lord with the prayers of our hearts. Please use the response, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church everywhere especially in areas affected by the virus and throughout the world. We pray that we can do what is needed to help protect people, to heal people, and to give people hope, hope based on Jesus. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who serve us in different capacities, for the president, for our governor, for the governors of all the states, uh, for all the, the agencies that um, are involved in trying to combat the virus and to protect people from getting sick, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are affected, who are affected by illness, especially the virus, anything else that impedes their health, um, for hospital workers and others, we pray to the Lord. For the particular intention for the Mass today, um, and for all of our beloved departed, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing for the Mass to continue. Though without congregations that are present um, with people who have access to this great sacrifice uh, through various means of social or media, uh, please help the power, that the power of the Mass will penetrate many homes uh, and bring families together, dear Lord, this time uh, to be little churches, communities of prayer and peace. We pray these things through your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed 
are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. May we receive, O Lord, we pray, the effects of this offering dedicated to you, so that we may be cleansed from all earthly ways and be renewed by growth in heavenly life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere we give you thanks. Lord, and Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that free from disordered affections they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as with us, and we acclaim holy, holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. my spirit within you and make you walk according to my laws and my judgments you shall keep and observe says the Lord Let us pray. May your holy gifts, O Lord, we pray, give us life by making us new and by sanctifying us, lead us to things eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Renew your people within and without, O Lord, and since it is your will that they be unhindered by bodily delights, 
Give them, we pray, perseverance in their spiritual intent through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in. Effective Monday, March 23rd, due to the governor of Ohio, Mike DeWine's stay-at-home order, Immaculate Conception Church uh, is closed uh, beginning today, at least through April 6th. In the event of an emergency, please call the parish office. Let us all pray together to end this pandemic. Our Father, we trustingly pray to you, asking that the coronavirus may do no more harm, that the pandemic may be swiftly gotten under control, that you restore the health of those affected and peace to the places where the virus has arrived. Welcome into your kingdom the people who have died from this illness and comfort their families. Sustain and protect the health care personnel who are fighting it and inspire and bless those working to control it. Lord Jesus, doctor of our bodies and souls, we feel impotent in the face of this international health emergency, but we trust in you. Give us health and peace. Mother Mary, protect us and continue to take care of us. And lead us through, through your love, your son, Jesus. Amen.